Aleichem again, friends and listeners. We hope you're all well. In this week's parasha, Parsha Skayasara, we learn about Avraham Avinu's purchasing the cave of Machpelah for the burial of Sarah Imenu. Avraham Avinu insisted on paying the total value of the plot, which amounted to 400 shekel kesef silver coins. Rashi points out that similarly, Davra Malach, when he went to purchase the area which was to be used for the Mizbeach, the Beis HaMikdash, he insisted on paying the full price. Why did Avraham Avinu insist on paying the full amount? He could have claimed it, after all, for free, since Hashem already promised Eretz Yisrael for his children. So the answer can be that Avraham Avinu wanted sole ownership of this property, which would be the burial place for Avraham Avinu and the other Imais and the future of us with the exclusion of Rachel. Similarly, Davra Melech insisted on paying the full amount for the land which was to be used for the Mizbeach from Arnon Hayavusi, even though he conquered it and the owner offered it for free because he wanted that it should be totally disassociated from its past owner. On a deeper level, we can say that Avram Avinu acted based on the Zohar. The Zohar tells us that a person should not try to do mitzvahs for free and without effort. If one does a mitzvah without effort, then he will not be able to draw down the special Kedusha, which is usually coming down with that particular mitzvah. And the Rebbe points out that the Torah tells us that when the Bnei Yisrael were in the Midbar, they used a certain uh, cliche, Zacharno es hadagar shenech achinam b'mitzrayim. We remember the free fish we had in Mitzrayim. So, free represents klippus. The klippus is something which comes without effort. Something not good. But, Kedusha requires toil. And that's why we have the concept of toiling for one's spiritual avayda. Even a person who has the gift of a good mind or somebody who doesn't have the challenge of strong Yetzirah which conceals on his nefesh kiss, should still toil to do mitzvahs. One should toil to do his job of being mevarer, to sift and refine his portion of the world. And this will make it to be exclusively his, without a, a, any association with its previous ownership, previous uh, sta status. The same concept we find in other places there points out that the Arizal is known to have paid the full amount of money for a mitzvah like, a, like an esrog. He wouldn't even bargain or try to ask for a good, for, a, for the cheapest price when he bought an esrog. Likewise, we find that there's a story with the Tzamech Tzadik. Somebody came to complain to him that um, he doesn't have a cheshek, a desire to learn Torah. So he responded. You should, be you, should be, you should appreciate that fact because this way you can have the baila of Yigiyah B'tayr, toiling in Torah. Uh, on a similar note, the Rebbe would often suggest that when they sell sperm for of Hasidus, the sperm, even though they, they, were, they were heavily subsidized and discounted, nevertheless, there has to be a nominal price so that people should value it. On the other hand, sometimes there could be a need to do things for free, like we discussed in last week's parsha, with Avram Avinu, who gave out free food and delicacies. And uh, similarly, when there was a case of uh, Russian immigrants who 
needed to have a, a Seder. So the Rebbe encouraged it to be totally free of charge. So they should want to come. In the schus of following this direct, directive, of spending money on mitzvahs without bargaining and without exercising a restraint when it comes to doing mitzvahs to the best of our ability, we will definitely be zeichem to the 400 worlds of desire which the tzaddikim will be getting in the future corresponding to the 400 shekel kesev which everyone will be paid and may it be b'kar mamash b'degula amitas v'ashleim 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 amitas v